Welcome back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of the Every Pokemon Episode Ever podcast. I am one of your hosts this week, good old wrestling Chris G. And on the other line with me is the man that does really good on tests. It's good old Dougie Fresh. Dougie man, how you doing? And I think this one could could do one, though. Watching this episode, and some of them, it's like, okay, well, that's impossible to get unless you pay. And I was kind of, well, we'll get into it, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll we'll get into it. Save all the good stuff for later. But yeah, th- yeah. this is episode 54 of our illustrious podcast, Doug, and it's called The Ultimate Test. Or translated from Japan, Pokemon League Certification Test. Oh, well, that's not that's not very creative at all. <laughs> not really. Not not even a little bit. I was curious <laughs> about the the Japanese translation because this one was so kind of down the line uh, in terms of the English one. I was yeah, this is that was just. What's the episode about? Well, it's a Pokemon League certification test. Well, perfect. Well, no, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> We're naming the episode that? Yeah. Well, all right. Fuck it. It's been a long week. So we are recording today's episode on June 15th, 2021. And it's five days before my birthday, which lands on Father's Day this year. Yay. I have no, um, I have no follow up. I, oh. I kept waiting. I was, I was like, I have, I don't have a way to jump in there. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're just, you're, you're just, you're just stating facts is all you're doing. Yeah. Uh, well, it's almost my birthday. I'm, I've been busy getting the swimming pool ready for, for the summer, and uh, just like every year, I'm bringing in the summer because the day after my birthday is uh, officially summer. It's the first day of summer on June 21st, if people although out there it, did not know that. Although, with as hot as, it, as it's been lately, you'd be forgiven to think it would have happened like two weeks ago by now. Yeah, but we also had snow in May for the first time in forever, so I don't, I don't know what the fuck is going on with the weather these days. At this point, I would, I would gladly take snow tomorrow. To- <laughs> <laughs> not, not a fan of this heat, Doug? No, it can fuck off because there was no in between. It went from like <laughs> extreme cold to extreme hot. Yeah, like I was, I was hoping that we get a nice little batch of seventies and a little bit of sun. I'm fucking going out there. I'm fucking cooking. Just being out here for an hour. Yeah, and I, I can speak for that because I, I mean, I take pride in mowing my grass and being out there right next to the pool. So. I'll, I'll give people the short end of it. So our cover for the pool. Probably not the first time you've said that. Uh, shut up. <laughs> our cover for the pool had about a three inch gap on one side, which apparently that little tiny three inch gap let in all the leaves, let in all the dirt, let in all the everything because my pool was dirtier than a motherfucker. And I've been freaking cleaning this sucker out since Sunday. It is now Tuesday, and I'm finally starting to get clear water. And hopefully, it'll everything will be ready by this upcoming um, Sunday for my birthday. But um, I just put the shock in the pool and everything, so I'll be vacuuming as of tomorrow. So there much. There you fun. go. Yeah, I know. But um, what I'm not looking forward to is I'm getting a cold, Doug. And I'm going to have to jump into this ice cold water to vacuum certain like parts or to scrub down certain parts. And I'm not looking forward to that too much. Well, I mean, that's the trade off, right? You know, we were stuck in stuck indoors for, you know, 16, 18 months, whatever it was. And, you know, we've been able to go out, you know. For however, I mean, people have been getting vaccinated for a while now. And, you know, people are going out and they're getting fucking colds again. You know, it's. Yep. Fucking. I mean, that's the trade off. I mean, I'll take a little bit of hay fever. 
Yeah. And being fully vaccinated myself, I, I had the pleasure, even though I got, I got yelled at. So um, no more going into stores without a mask. But it, it was refreshing going back to the store and not having. Well, you don't have to go it. and you don't have to get back in the house to fucking broadcast it. <laughs> yeah, but if someone gets sick, I'm going to feel like a dick. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I um I shouldn't be broadcasting it, but I broadcasted it one time and scolded for it. So no more broadcasting it, whether I do or yeah. I don't. It's it's my prerogative. But um on another note, Doug, um we have some exciting news for next week's show. Oh right. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> oh, it's just cause like <laughs> You know, I mean, the pieces just kind of started falling into place like today. So it's not like, you know, we've been able to build up to it. True, true. But everybody, um, we've talked about... it's not about... like he's going to listen to this anyway, so it's whatever. <laughs> he might. He he's might. not going to do it. I mean, he <laughs> might, since you said you're going to say something. <laughs> but um, our, we, we've talked about him a lot. Um, he's a... Uh, He's one of our best friends, Doug, um, coming on the show. Yes, it's another best friend, not someone that is plugging anything. But um, our co-host from Sports Entertainment Breakdown, the SEB crew, good old C-Note, is going to make his first appearance on the Pokemon podcast. What's this uh, Sports Entertainment Breakdown you speak of? <laughs> right? I, I don't even know what the, what, what the SEB crew is anymore. Jesus, it's been so long since we've recorded that. Well, there hasn't really been a reason to. No, there hasn't. And unless Vince McMahon, as of today, we read, we me and you both read the story that he's trying to have every single match count for something, which is going to be really hard for him to do um, for a three-hour show, but have every single match count for something, unless... He actually follows through, and that's the new norm. Monday Night Raw has been a little boring lately, and we we can we I can grace gracefully say that SmackDown. I I look forward to SmackDown each week, but you can't talk SmackDown for an hour and a half, going on two hours once a week. Well, and I've even it's gotten to the point where I've even started to break down SmackDown. And I've kind of come to the conclusion that if you take Roman Reigns out of SmackDown, it's just two hour raw. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah, it's until they get John Cena and they get The Rock in here. I don't I don't really know what WWE is these days. I mean, well, their, 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 their ratings aren't proving anything lately either. So I'm, I'm kind of scared for them. That's the rumor for SummerSlam, Cena versus Roman. Reigns. And Rock versus Reigns at Mania is the big rumor, too. We'll see yeah, what happens. To their credit, they've wanted that for like five years. Yeah, but they were going to have it last year, but then pandemic happened, and Rock's like, I'm not wrestling in front of nobody. I'm not wrestling in front of nobody or risking my health, because at that point, yeah, it was it was still early doors. Well, he, he the Rock did, the Rock and his family did get COVID. During the whole, they, yeah, they did. That's right. So, but all right. So, Doug, you ready to get on into the news this week? Ready as I'll ever be. All right. So, this week's episode, The Ultimate Test, debuted in Japan on July 30th, 1998, and here in the States, April 24th, 1999. And I should have an alarm that sounds right now because I'm going first for once this week and not out of spite or anything. I I honestly found a date and this um CBS began um broadcasting in Erie um Pennsylvania in 1954 which later came out to the rest of the world of what we know it is it literally called cbs like everywhere in the states doug 
Well, yeah, I mean, CBS is the, I mean, those are the call letters, obviously. It's it's Capital Broadcasting System or something along those lines. Station. I um, it might, Yeah, it might be Station. Yeah, that's actually, that sounds more plausible. Um, you know, the, the big networks like, you know, obviously ABC is American Broadcasting Company. And, Fox. and well, Fox, Fox is actually the latest of the, of the big ones. It, for the longest time, it was NBC, CBS, and ABC. Oh. Um, you know, maybe PBS is in there somewhere, but that, that doesn't really count because that's basically just public broadcasting. <laughs> um, you want to know another fact? We, we didn't get uh, I, NBC or ABC um, out here in Illinois until 1959, which is five years later. Well, damn. On this exact date. Well, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Hawaii got CBS before we got CBS. How the fuck does whole? I mean, not, nothing against any of you Hawaiians out there, but Hawaii is kind of its own thing. Like you can't even get certain things shipped out to Hawaii. How the hell did they get CBS before the rest? Some of the rest of some of the world. Holy well, God. as as much as they're out on their own, you know, speaking specifically in Illinois, we're smack dab in the middle of the damn country. Exactly. Well, yeah, but we're not like we're not on a coast or anything. We you know, have Chicago. Not... Well, and How... depending on what you read, that's either awesome or a shithole. <laughs> it is a shithole. Um, <laughs> we live here, but um, but yeah, I don't that... live here. I live an hour out of that mess. That that that's what we. Yes, we live in the suburbs, and proud of it. <laughs> So, all right, Doug. So, um, that was mine this week. And what is yours this week? Well, I'm going the I'm going the wrestling Chris G route. Uh oh. So April twenty fourth, two thousand eighteen. Oh shit! Real recent. Okay. Yeah, like I say, the wrestling Chris G route. So, um, <laughs> we flip flopped this. Week. <laughs> I took the Dougie Dougie Fresh route. Exactly. According to the International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, a.k.a. the IFPI, <coughs> I think I know me. what you're talking about. I don't think you know shit. I, I think I saw this on my site. <laughs> you, you, you should have because it was front page. Yep. And I'm honestly surprised you didn't go with it, to be completely transparent with you. Um, streaming music services overtake worldwide sales of CD and vinyl for the first time since sales records were tracked. Oh. Okay. Now. So what does that really mean? Obviously. Though? In layman's terms, that means that that means that CDs are dead. Okay. And they've probably been dead. I don't know. I would. Well, I was going to say since we got out of high school, but that's that's probably not fair. Um. I don't really know when I noticed the shift. I'm trying to think, and without getting up and looking through shit, I I can't tell you my last physical cd that i bought but there used to be a period of time where i would go into best buy on a tuesday or a friday whatever i think the music day was tuesday it shifted to friday when it all went to streaming i'd leave with a record you know it plopped down you know whatever 16 20 bucks whatever it was i'd leave with a record oh I mean, I can't, I I probably haven't paid for music. I brought you to the dark side a long time ago. I remember you were completely against um, getting music other ways. I'll just put it that way. Well, I still like I still like physically having media, you know, but 
for it got to a point where it's like for what I'm getting, I'm paying too much for a for a disc. And with the frequency of stuff that was coming out there, it just made sense to to find it certain way. Like I'm still physical with my games. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that'll I'm sure that'll read it reach a tipping point, but yeah, I'm I'm more in the camp of that I like having physical games, but uh, the last few games that I've bought for my son have been digital copies. The only thing I don't like is um I ran into a I ran into a slump, okay? And I'm I'm and I know this is really off topic, but I'm gonna say it just for saying sake. Well they make pills for that. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Um so my son was playing WWE 2K18. Oh damn! Yeah, 2K18. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> when he was playing it, I I originally when I bought it, I had all the uh, extra downloads and stuff. Okay. So he loaded it up. Um, I re-downloaded um everything that was on the store. Um, but they got rid of two of the extra downloads that I had originally paid for, and it's no longer available in the store to download. Oh. And that kind of pissed me off. Like, there was a Rey Mysterio pack where you got, like, six different wrestlers. That's not available no more. You can't get that shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was, like, the... Uh, there was a... I, I know the pack, but I can't think of what they called it. But yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, I wasn't too happy. And then, and then, it it has enough nerve when you load the game up to say you don't have these files. You might want to go to the store and download these files to get the full experience <laughs> yeah. of the game. And when you click on it, it says nothing available. Oh, so I one was... hand, <laughs> so one hand doesn't know what the other hand's doing at that point. Apparently, yes. Imagine someone going on eBay or something and buying a digital copy of that game from someone that has the code to give you everything, and you don't get everything. Yeah, that is kind of shitty. So I mean, you know, I mean, you know, it was from 2018, so at a certain point. You go, yeah, but honestly, that's their own fault because people should still want to play twenty. I mean, hell, we should be. What time? What? It's June. We should be getting ready for. Or no, we should almost have had twenty-one by now, shouldn't we? Yeah, we're we're about to be in. We're about to get twenty twenty-two out in November. Oh, Christ. no, but really? Yeah, November of this year. It hits different. Oh, it's going to hit different when nobody buys it. <laughs> so, so yeah, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it brought us into a whole conversation that I'm sure people are like, let's get on to the Pokemon. But thank you, Doug. No, no, really, November. Yes, that's, no, that, that, that's normally when WWE games come out every November, right before Christmas. Right after, um, right after Thanksgiving, or right before Thanksgiving, because because nice. Cnode always makes a note that he gets those games um, on Black Friday for a cheaper price. This is true. So, all right. So you ready, Doug? Oh yeah. All right. So. I'm powering everything up as of right now, and I should have done that like five minutes ago, but shut up. Um, let's see. There's my Netflix. I'm pulling open the show. <coughs> I'm coughing. And all right. So you want to start this week's episode while I'm loading this up, Doug? <coughs> yes, because I was prepared. Um, I'm good. So this episode, no, you're not. I'm. Hey, I do it every time I see you. I promise you. Yeah, and I give it right. 
I give it right the fuck back. <laughs> if you can get me. <laughs> yeah, you ain't running nowhere. <laughs> no. Uh, so this episode starts with our protagonist having a picnic. Togepi yes. and Pikachu are sitting around and Ash, Misty, and we get a whole bunch of unnecessary chewing. Yeah, and okay. Just tell, just, t- tell me that kind of bothered you a little bit. Oh, I hated it. Because <laughs> it made no sense to me. I mean, hated it, do- it, hated it. <laughs> I mean, it made sense, but it didn't at the same time. Like, I, I don't want all this chewing. Like, just, just get on with the episode. So. Hey, that's 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 a couple seconds they didn't have to do anything. Yeah, apparently, yes. You know, coming off the freaking uh, theme song, but um, and then Misty basically goes, "Hey, Ash, you're shit. When are you gonna get off your ass and get another badge?" <laughs> she was an asshole, and she made she made Ash like she took she she took him by surprise. Number one, and he started like choking on his food. Yeah, well, I didn't like this reaction from Ash. Like, cause, and I understand he, he's 10 years old, and he's a little kid, and especially a little boy. And, you know, I mean, I can attest to not, not taking criticism the best. But this motherfucker was so caught off guard slash angry. Well, I I kind of blame Misty on that part because Misty, being being a ass, um, said, "Well, maybe you can make another gym leader feel bad for you and win a badge that way." I mean, but tell me where the lie is, though. <laughs> that is that 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 it. Well, let's see. All the badges that he's won, so he's gotten Brock, right? He's gotten Misty, right? Um. He legitimately defeated Lieutenant Sarge. Yes, after a, a redo and a hospital stint. Um, we had Sabrina, who that he made he, he 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 made her laugh into submission. Right, that doesn't count. It does too. That doesn't count. It does too. That's not no, that's does. not his fault that Abra that was linked to that, Sabrina. That doesn't count. How does it not? Because it doesn't, because it was not a legitimate battle. There was some spooky ass shit, and <laughs> just by virtue of finding Sabrina's inner child. Okay. Um, Plus, I'm, it took him three episodes to fucking do it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, let's see, because I know he's going after the Cinnabar Island badge. He was given the rainbow badge. Yes, he was given the rainbow. Um, I'm actually looking back on these episodes, um, and I think that oh. might be it. Yeah, that is well, it. Uh, well, he's he's got six. Uh, oh, right, the, so... nin- the the ninja pokey showdown, the Fuchsia City Gym. That one count? Yes. Uh, let's I see. Am- Ba, ba, ba. Do, 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 do. Oh yes, that's when like, he, that that that's when he had to uh like basically save the Venonat and all of that inside of the that ninja Pokemon gym that was in the middle of nowhere. So he was given that as well. Okay, so yeah, you're right. You're right. So so yeah, he's beaten Surge. And that's about it. <laughs> Sarge is a Cause, whale. Because Brock and Misty don't count. Those are his first two. Lieutenant Surge was three. The Rainbow Badge is four. And he was given that. The Fuchsia City is five. So I'm missing one. <clears throat> People are probably yelling at us right now. You guys go over these episodes. How do you not remember? It's a lot of fucking. Oh, they, they all blend into one. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah, it does. I, yeah, there's one that I'm that I can't remember. He might have gotten two legitimately. 
Like, I'll give him Lieutenant Surge at this point, but. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Electric Shock Showdown, Shipwreck, Beauty and the Beach, the episode we don't talk about anymore. Uh, Psychic Showdown, Hypnos Nap Time. Oh, the Psychic one, the Psychic one would be, would be six. Yes. Well. That one doesn't count. So. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing so else. Got, so out of the six that he's got, he got one legitimately, and it took him two goes and Pikachu growing a backbone. Yes. So, so good show, stuff. again, I'll I'll show I'll bring us back to Ash choking on a sandwich. Show me the lie. Ah, uh, so. And, and Misty really shouldn't talk at this point because she was privy to Ash. Well, not really. If it was up to Misty, he probably wouldn't have gotten that bad. No, no. Remember, he he. She was mad that the sisters just gave it to him. You're right. Because because yeah, so because up... Misty was like, wait a minute, I had him beat, <laughs> and she did. So if so, if it was up to Misty, Ash would be sitting there with five badges. Yes. So, but yeah, after he. He was choking on his on his sandwich. Uh, he he's like, you know, it takes a lot of skill to win these badges and to win these battles. And Misty's like, Misty again, just to chop him down. Goes, how much skill does it take to win a match against Team Rocket? Facts. And, and, <laughs> and, and then we get like a little like snap of Team Rocket, who must be in a bush somewhere. At this point, because they just looked over their shoulder and they were like, "Huh?" <laughs> I did, I, I did chuckle at that. So and he's like, "You know what? I'll show you some skills. I challenge you to a match right now." And Pikachu's like, "No, don't!" And freaking Todd <laughs> over here is sitting here like, "Stay right there, stay right there, Pikachu." Oh yeah, we forgot to mention Todd is back again. In his little, uh, uh, as he's following our trio for the next couple episodes. Literally the next couple, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I forget. Was it mentioned that he was sticking around? No, it wasn't mentioned. I didn't, I didn't think so. It wasn't mentioned, but I mentioned last week because I went ahead and I, I watched this episode last week as well. And I, I made note, I was like, oh, Todd's still around. I forgot Todd, Todd was still here. And they've had some interesting people who follow them. Like, do you remember um, Tracy? I mean, we haven't gotten to him yet, but he's going to be coming up sometime soon. But Tracy uh, followed him around, and he wasn't a photographer, but he liked to draw Pokemon. I Yeah, now that you say that, I do remember him sitting under trees with his sketch pad. Yes. I was trying to, yeah, until you said that, because... He was the one that replaced Brock when Pete, when Pokemon <clears throat> thought that Brock was too lewd for a Pokemon kids TV show. And then people got all up in arms and they brought Brock back. Well, he was getting there. <laughs> he was. He was getting there. And and how how mad would you be at this point? So <clears throat> he, he he's telling Pikachu to just wait there for a brief second so he can snap a photo of Pikachu. And Ash, just like in last week's episode, puts his head right in the camera and goes, hey, cut it out. Well, and this is going to be funny because I was. I was kind of getting on his shit for getting in Todd's way last week. I'm going to defend Ash here. Only because and I understand that Todd's just trying to do his deal, right? Yes. But we've established that he should. He is under no perceived obligation to try to get this picture of this Pikachu at this point because we figured, you know, it was figured out this the whole thing was just a Team Rocket ruse. Yes. So, and so, you know, I mean, he just wanted that, a good picture. What if that w could have been one of his million dollar shots? Well, yeah, but see, the problem is now Ash is he's been poked. Ash is motivated now. So fuck anything anybody else wants at this point. Okay. Misty has has stirred the pot, and now we remember that 
you know, this is Ash's show. So let's kind of keep the plot moving here. So, so yes. So Ash, Ash gets mad and he's like, this is no time for pictures. Um, that's exactly what I want to prove. I want to get my, or, or, um, and then Todd's like, well, why don't you go and just get yourself admitted? And Ash is like, what? Admitted? He's like, yeah, there's a Pokemon League examination, uh, admissions exam, uh, right down the road. And if you go there, um, you can become a Pokemon master. They basically give you a badge of honor. And Ash is like, a Pokemon League admission exam. And, Misty gets peaked too when she hears this and Pikachu and Togepi don't even know what the hell they're talking about. So they just pop into the frame for a brief second to be cute. And then we shoot on over to the title sequence, Doug. Would you do this? Um, I mean, if I had, I'm sure it's not free, but if I had the money, if I was a Pokemon trainer, if I had time to kill, I'd go and take this test for a day. Right, but I, like, okay, I, so I think I would have done better than Ash. This is kind of um, in lieu of the badges, yes. Yes. Like you, you take this test, you pass it. You don't need to go out and get the badges. Yes. So you pass this test. Um, you get to go to the Pokemon League without i mean and they they have other exams like i mean other ways to do this um there's actually a so we have um at the beginning um of when we started this podcast the school of hard knocks so they go to that school and they get um to go through the entire school and once they learn everything they can go into the pokemon league after they graduate okay um this this the ultimate test you go and you take this test, and if you score within a certain amount of ranking, you get to go to the Pokemon League without doing all the traveling either. I mean, we we come to find out later on in this episode, which is what we're getting ready to go into, that uh, some people can't just can't travel, so they 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 need this test in order to fulfill their dream. So, there's legitimate reasons to take it. Ash is just taking it because his pride's been challenged. Yes. And he, it, he it's that, and he's he's just found out about it. He, said, what, he basically had this inner monologue of, why the fuck have I been walking up and down these spooky forests and only gotten six badges because people have felt sorry for me? Or I've legitimately saved, because he's legitimately saved a couple people. Um, but that's not worth a badge, in my opinion. Um, so, um, if you, if you don't mind, Doug, um, there's that, and, and normally I don't like reading verbatim, <clears throat> um, anything that's going on, but I'm going, I'm going to read this because it kind of explains everything. So, um, we fast forward from the title sequence to our trio getting, um, uh, introduced to, um, the ultimate test, the Pokemon League test. And this is how it is explained. To get into the Pokemon League, a trainer has to travel from one Pokemon gym to another to collect badges to prove that he's defeated each gym master. However, here at the Pokemon League Admission Center, we evaluate applicants based on a combined written and practical exam, and all of those who pass receive this badge. Oh, he's talking way too fast. <laughs> he was talking. Basically, it's, it's basically what we said. Yeah. So- if, if- he 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 has a big red badge, and it's one badge which is good enough for the eight badges that you would get in any of the other gyms. Right. Um, and I I was sitting here because you know a little 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 peek behind the curtain. This is the first episode we watched because. Uh, you know, we try to, we've mentioned a couple times that we try to do two episodes ago, you know. Yes. So this is the first one we watched. So I've had, so, and you know, it's about, well, it doesn't really matter what time it is. So basically I had 40 minutes to sit and think about this episode. Yes. And I think I would prefer 
to go out and get the badges. I think I would too. I mean, well, hindsight being 2020, but we we've also watched the episode and we know what the test is like now. Would you? Yeah, would, this, would, this would, test can fuck right off. <laughs> And that's that's the funny part of this episode. So the guy hands Ash his number. Ash gets, um, as he calls, lucky number seven. And even Misty and Ash is like, I see, I'm lucky already. And Misty's like, a little modest would uh, modesty wouldn't hurt. And Pikachu's like, yeah, Pika. And then we we transfer over to Jesse who wanted number seven. Doug, do you want to take it from here? Right. Um, so, and then, <clears throat> you know, um, Ash over here, her, and she has to, you know, quickly look away, and she's like, you know, occupation diva, you know, age 17, which, you know, right. Um, <laughs> and something I didn't notice until... Um, watching this episode in the background as we're recording this this whole time that they're in this uh application center Todd's just bouncing around taking pictures <laughs> yeah which is i kind, didn't kind, notice that was, which is kind of creepy what would well, you do yes if you walked no. in I mean, what if what would you do if you walked into a place like this and then a guy's just snapping random photos of you oh somebody's getting hit in the nuts <laughs> like cut that out um <laughs> cut that out but i've been walking for a week what the fuck are you doing get out of here but also just just with him taking photos i mean we we transition from that straight over to nurse joy like a nurse joy and let's see brock immediately for really, she's from she's from vermilion city right Right, or she's related to the Vermilion City Joys, or something along those lines. So, yeah, we're we're about and, and, to get into that. Um, Brock starts walking over to Nurse Joy because he's noticed her, but then the instructor um, tells Ash, "Well, you have to leave your Pokeballs here with me." Um, yeah, this can fuck right off. Yeah, why? I that I don't understand. He's uh, he he's like, you're not permitted to use your own Pokemon in this exam. Right. Which is and, what? And I understand I understand you know, people are gonna say, Well, you don't get to use your own the what well, well, the fuck you don't. You get to use your own car when you take a driver's test, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do yeah, you do. So yeah, this can fuck right off. So and, it's like And we I mean we find out the reason behind this which is still kind of well no not even because still the, stupid yeah it's still stupid but because like the mark of a good trainer right is is being able to properly train your pokemon both physically and emotionally you know in in terms of like gaining a rapport with your pokemon like obviously you know, we've kicked it around, you know, at what level is Pikachu versus the level he's performing at? Yes. Because he's probably performing at a higher level than he should be. But obviously there's this, like, you know, meld as one kind of... I mean, obviously, you know, Charizard's turned into a dick. But, like, he's close with Squirtle and Bulbasaur and Pidgeotto. I mean, I, we don't talk about Krabby or Muck. <laughs> at all yeah uh, well well, he doesn't have crabby or muck on him but it never well we've had that whole discussion about he's got open spots but you know I, you know if you want to hear that go back a couple episodes um so yeah ash has built up a rapport with these pokemon and the tra the the guy's like well no this is that's not part of the test you'll be provided pokemon and we'll see how this happens uh, coming up later in the episode, but no, this test can fuck right off right here. Yes. So he takes his Pokemon, and then Misty says that she will take care of Pikachu um, during this whole test test exam. So Pikachu goes and bounces over to her, and 
that's about it. And Ash is so stoked. And he's like, he's like, I'm going to pass this test. And then they walk over to Nurse Joy where Brock is. And we find out Nurse Joy has a, I guess, I guess you could say she has a fantasy of becoming a Pokemon master herself. And this Nurse Joy um, is from the Fuchsia, uh, Fuchsia City. And she is. But she's related to the Vermilion Cities. Yes. She's, she's right. sis, uh, her, that's actually her sister. Um, unlike the right. other ones where they say that they're cousins, her sister is the one that's in Vermilion City. And Brock just gets all sorts of smitten. And he's like, you're the prettiest of them all. And Missy's like, you say that about every single one of them. So, Doug? Which, you know, you know why wouldn't you? I don't think there's one big, you know, Nurse Joy group chat. Um, oh, Purple purple and Cross. Purple, well, purple Cross, yeah. Well, is that purple? What, what would you consider that? It's not like purple. It's like a pinkish purple. If that's pink or purple, you need to check your monitor. All right. Well, I'm colorblind. <laughs> it's darker than James's hair, for goodness sake. It is. Okay. Okay. So purple. <laughs> All right. So we have a purple um, cross this week. Yeah. And, you know, old Nurse Joy has a bit of an accent. Not not quite as thick as the chef next week, boy. Who? <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's see if you, you if you're able to pull that one off and get us. Boy, I, I almost fell off my seat when I was watching that one. I, you got to be shouted because I didn't remember. I remember there was a. Well, we'll get into. It. I, goddamn. Um. So you know we have we get we're we're kind of wrapping up with Nurse Joy, and Ash looks over, and James walks in, and he's you know he's got like fashion glasses on and, yeah um, <laughs> look at just all sorts of mysterious and Ash is like he looked really familiar too and yeah these episodes give me a fucking headache sometimes yeah and th- this is what pissed me off so uh, the guy uh, the guy takes his paper and calls him James and stuff and the the girl or uh, the girl that we know is Jesse looks over at him and she she's just like, huh? Get who, who are you or or James? And he's like, hey, get lost, you old bat. And Jesse does not really take well to that. And she like base. Does she bonk him? Yes. Yeah, she, she takes him. And no, she just. She- she just drags him outside, just throws him on the ground. Yeah. And basically he looks right at her and he's like, yeah, that outfit is not that flattering on you. You, you, you need to change outfits. Cause Jesse is all sorts of pissed off by being called an old bat. And basically we have this whole conversation about what are you doing here? Well, never mind that. What are you doing here? Um, yeah, apparently they li- they all lied to each other to come to th- to take this test, which why would they have to lie to each other? Yeah, why? And I hardly and I I don't get the impression that they would they've ever been apart from each other long enough to both end up in the same spot. Um you know, James says he's always dreamt about being a Pokémon master and he he wants to live his dream rather than his reality. Jesse says she, this is one more thing for her to add to her impressive resume. And Meow finds him because, of course, he does. Well, Je- Jesse, goes, Jesse considers herself an accomplished hostess, a florist, a costume designer, and a wine expert, a beautician. And now she wants to be a Pokemon master. Well, you know, why not? There's probably an extra line at the bottom of the page. Might as well fill it. Um, but yeah, Meowth, Doug? Yeah, so Meowth finds him and says, well, this this is a far cry from being at your sick uncle's bedside, Jesse, and this is a funny-looking dental appointment, James, and 
Jesse and James kind of laugh it off. They say, well, this is such a beautiful day. We decided to have a picnic. And the Alf is pissed about being lied to, so he scratches them both. <laughs> well, he, he was suspicious about it the entire time. And he's just like, he's just grinning from ear to ear. And he's like, yeah. He's like, are you sure that's, that's the reason you're here? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You effing liars. Scratch, scratch. <laughs> Sorry. And, um, <clears throat> it, you know, Meowth is like, you know, seriously, what's the real reason you're here? And, and James is like, hey, look at this. And he throws a freaking ball of yarn and Meowth remembers it's a cat. And, um, chases down the ball and, and they go running back into the building. And then we're now and in we get, number one. Right. <laughs> Which, all right, so we're going to go through some of these tests. And some of these tests are just fucking bogus. I don't get it, but I guess. All right. So exam number one. Everybody's inside of the room. We see Nurse Joy. We see Ash. We see Team Rocket. And uh, the guy, the instructor says that I'm going to throw up an image on the Oh, no, no, no. We're not there yet. My bad. My no, bad. This, that's two. Yeah. So exam one, um, a- Ash gets a photo of Lickitung, and it says Lickitung's um, tongue is twice the length of its body. True or false? And Ash is just, an, Ash is an idiot. Well, he, he thinks it's it's false because he thinks the tongue is longer. The tongue is longer. Yes. So let's see. So he puts false, and then next we have it's a we have a picture of Vulpix, and it says Nine Tails evolves from Vulpix only with the use of the Firestone, which is true. Yes, which is true. And Ash is like, "Oh, that's too easy. That's true." And then we get Hitmonlee is also known as the Punching Demon. Demon. Which is false. Yeah. But wh- why a Punching Demon? <laughs> this is also a 90s, 90s TV show. Well, if, if, if this is where you're getting stuck up, I mean, we're going to be here a while. Um, it was mostly just like, hey, is Hitmonlee a puncher or a kicker? And... I mean, to Ash's credit, at least he remembers there's a Hitmonchan, which would have been the answer, but he, and I think he's flustered, and he goes, "I, it's true, and he's wrong. Yep. And, and, then, and then we get a picture of Magikarp. <laughs> and then we, yeah, we get Magikarp, and the only attack Magikarp learns at, at birth is Splash, and then we get, you know, we get, um, James is having, you know, flashbacks. He hates Magikarp because um, he's been fooled twice. And he's over there struggling, and we cut to Jesse, who's just hitting true. <laughs> and she's like, true, 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 true. <laughs> he goes, Well, I could just I could guess and get and I'm gonna get half these right, which she's not wrong, but that's a bullshit thought process. <laughs> She she's literally telling kids if you don't know just guess you you'll get something. Well, what's what's the um what's the what's the saying if you, if you're not sure about an answer just say C. <laughs> yes. So she gets one that says Caterpie is the smallest uh, is the world's smallest Pokemon. She goes true 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 and james looks over at her and he's like wow she has such confidence while she's doing this she's gonna ace this thing doug you've backtracked on me well well you 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 skipped a few pokemon i'm sorry sorry i i I just i just think some of these are are pretty funny i skipped i I skipped the caterpies i think all i skipped and then we got coughing Oh, I forgot about. I did forget about. Co- which James should know that one. Yes, because he had a coffee. 
Even though he didn't probably, I mean, I think it was established that he was given his coughing as a, a birthday or a Christmas gift. Which so, is I mean, a it's not like he found Christmas gift. It kind of is. Um, <laughs> Just I mean, a little that's bit. like a that's like a congratulations on on getting your shots kind of gift or something. Yeah, that's not a it's not a birthday gift. But we go straight to exam um, number two, which can fuck right off. Yeah, this one's dumb on a lot of different levels. I mean, there's one where it's like, okay, if you're paying attention, maybe you get that one. But these other ones were kind of shit. Yeah. So the instructor goes, now we will measure your ability to recognize Pokemon. I'm going to throw up some images on this screen, and you have to guess what Pokemon it is just by the body type. And Ash is so confident. He's like, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake. And then this first one, we get a yellow background and a circle. Done. And a and a black dot. Yes, which is so, bullshit. So Ash goes, well, it's, it's a Voltor. James says it's a Pokeball. <laughs> Jesse says it's an Electrode. Which and are all fucking, good. Which is the, are all good answers. And it's a fucking Jigglypuff from above. Yes. How in the absolute fuck are you supposed to get that from that? You're not. Because it wasn't it wasn't like the jiggly like you could see like the jigglypuff swirl. Because if you look at the jigglypuff, there is a bit of a like okay if I'm looking at that if if I'm looking at that from above, maybe. I would I would understand that, but but it was just a black circle on a white background, like you said. Yes. How in the hell? And then we have the next one is just a spiral. Now, this one I'll stand up for. Yes. I I originally thought it was a poly. Right. It's a very distinct swirl. And I had it down to three. It was either polywag, poly whirl, or poly wrath. Yes. I thought it was poly. And... Yeah, I think if I would have guessed, I probably would have said uh, Polyworld as well. Um, uh, James says Almanite. Um, Jesse says it's an Arbok fully coiled up. Which is a fair guess after the first question was bullshit. Yeah. Uh, and then Ash is at least, you know, probably a, a an inch or two away from being correct. Yeah, he said Polyworld or Polyrath. Right. And then it turns out to be polywag, which is the it's the first um, the first stage. And then but this guy has a very valid point. He said the swirl on its stomach reverses direction uh, when it evolves from polyworld um, polywag to polyworld. Which if I'm which to me is like, OK, that's the one thing that you've said right this whole damn time. And. Ash, I would think, has just, like, randomly scroll, scrolled past that fact at this point. As much as he fucking Didn't want probably to. sits there and, and listens to Dexter. I mean, I know he hasn't... I don't believe he's uh, a counter to Polyworld in the wild. No, I don't, I don't think so either. 51 episodes, I think that's one Pokemon. Well, he, ha- he has... And count no, that was a Machamp. Yeah, I don't no, no. know. Well, there was a Poliwhirl at the Evolution party. It was, but I don't think he talked to that. No, he didn't. But it was in the fountain. Yeah, because I think um, the Poliwhirl had just evolved into Poliwrath. So it was just chilling and swimming. Right. So this next one. Okay, so this next one, I immediately knew it wasn't a Rapidash. It had to be a Ponyta. And Ash should have known this, too, because he fucking rode a a Ponyta in an episode, and it evolved while he was on it. Uh, Yeah, I was going to say, he's actually technically rode both of them pretty much at the same time. Um, But yeah, he definitely, I mean, fair play to him. He's obviously dealt with Flames and Charmanders, Charmeleons, and Charizards. But I feel like 
that flame does not look like any of those. No, and especially just the way it's sitting. If it was a char, if it was a Charizard's flame, like he said, it would be coming at you from a different angle. Yes, because the tail is slightly elevated and tilting inward, and you would see part of the tail. Right. So he he goes and says that it's Charmander. He's like, it must be a Charmander, which in, in the picture, I mean, you, I can kind of see that, but at the same time, the flame is not positioned right. And then, of course, the answer was Ponyta. And it's smaller. Yeah, uh, Charmander's flame, by virtue of a, a Ponyta, is smaller. And yeah. oh, sorry. Uh, with, with a Charmander, the flame is just on the end of the tail. Tony time Rapidash, the flame is the tail. Yes. So right, and look, obviously people are sitting there going, Well, obviously you have all the answers. You've seen the episodes, you're you're going through it with the benefit of pause and rewind and Yeah, but I'm stuff. I'm I'm you know, giving you my first it. impression watching this back and I got I, I did get um polywags wrong. I got, I did get the Jigglypuff wrong because I was like, "What the fuck is that?" But nobody Ponyta, gets that. Right. I, I got, I got to imagine in the history of this test, nobody has gotten that question. <laughs> Nurse Joy did because it's a bullshit <laughs> question. Nurse, she, she must have. She was what number three? Yeah. <laughs> she said, "Well, I know that outline anywhere." So, but it's at this point that Jesse is just getting pissed off, and she's like, "She's like, this test is unfair." And I'm done taking this test. And the instructor's like, please take your seat, ma'am. And she's like, this is a joke. Th- these questions are stupid and they and they won't make you a Pokemon master, which she does she has a point. Yeah, she's not wrong. But from her talking out about this, she gets expelled out of out of this um it, 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 I was about to say emissions test, but she gets out of this assessment test. She's not a car. I know. Um, <laughs> she might be. <laughs> so, well, she might be. If she, she's probably not a gas guzzler. Um, I don't know. Um, Ask James. Which I don't know. Um, but then we shoot so, out to meow. Know, oh, sorry. We, 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 um, so she leaves. And then Ash goes, boy, that woman sure does have anger problem. Like, he still doesn't fucking... It pisses me off. Um, How does he still not know? Right, it's been 50-whatever episodes. Um, so then we're sitting there, and we're back in the common area. And they bring down this big board with the test results and the... What is it? The high scores are on the left side, the low scores are on the right, or vice versa. And Ash was in the bottom three. For this test. He has this really good line. Because they can't find his, his name right away. And. Um, he goes well. I'm I'm probably on the screen. With the, the highest score. And um, old Todd's over there. And he goes um, over here fella. And it's a screen. And it's. James and Ash are on the top line. And. and Jesse's at the bottom. Jesse's below with a big fat zero because she's been expelled. And then what does Ash say to laugh off the test? Because he has this line. <laughs> uh, his line was, let's see. Oh, M- M- Misty says, uh, oh, shit. I, I, pa- I fast forwarded when I was trying to play. So. Uh, yeah, Misty uh, or Ash says. Pokemon oh. isn't about tests, it's about battles. Yes. Yes, it's about battles. Which is what's fair. <laughs> and Misty's like, well, Ash, it looks like you didn't have enough luck or skill to pass this test. <laughs> oh, shit. She is an ass. But um, James saw that, and he's all pissed off. And he says that now he has to avenge Jesse because Jesse's been expelled. So now we're on to exam number three. And we see a real quick, um, we have a real quick scene of Joy uh, battling with a Squirtle against a Charmander. Yes. And we're 
to assume that it's kicking his ass and and, and Brock's standing there and he's like You're doing great giving directions to Todd. And he's giving directions to Todd, you know, I, I want eight by ten glass glossies and wallet sizes. Todd's <laughs> like, right. So this next scene, we have Ash coming up to the table where the where the original instructor was, and they have to pick um, from these multiple belts that are on the table in order to battle with their with those Pokemon to become a Pokemon master. That's bullshit. Someone else. Yeah, well, Pokemon? yeah. I mean, well, yeah. As soon as as soon as somebody says, "Well, give me your Pokemon that you've caught and you've trained," as soon as as soon as that happened, I'm out of there already. Um, I mean, I take the written and the memorization test just for shits and grins, but yeah. I've got these Pokemon to get the badges in the first place. I'm taking this test as a matter of convenience and you're taking away the Pokemon that I've got. You could fuck right off. Exactly. So we go straight from that and James is on the field and he's about, he's about to fight the instructor and Jesse and me out there standing on the side, just rooting him on. Yeah, because apparently, apparently getting expelled. Well, I mean, Meowth obviously was never in it. Um, but apparently Jesse doesn't have to like leave the premises. She can just hang around. Yeah. I would think she'd have to leave. Me too. But this is where the but, Pokemon inside of these Pokeballs start getting a little wonky slash funny. So yeah, James throws out a Pokeball and it's a Pikachu and everybody is astounded. Even, even um, Todd, Brock and Misty standing on the sidelines and Pikachu is just ready. And the um, instructor then throws out a golem. I mean, not a golem, a graveler and yeah. freaking James goes, Oh, I can't wait. I can't lose. Cause I know all of these attacks, thunder shock, thunderbolt. I've been destroyed by Pikachu's attack so many times. I know them all by heart. <laughs> And freaking Jessie just has her hands and she's like, this is kind of pathetic if you think about it. <laughs> and, you know, so James is completely, you know, on cloud nine and he says, yo, Thundershock and, you know, Pikachu throws it out there. And he goes, well, that felt great to say. And obviously... Even somebody who's had just a an elementary knowledge of Pokemon knows that electric types have no effect on rock types, but Team Rocket's a bunch of dum dums. Yep. Uh, the Thunder, you know, Graveler absorbs the attack and just bulls Pikachu right off of James's face. <laughs> So, so it's at that point he lost round one. So now James is pissed. So he he sends out two Pokemon, and then you know he sends out a Charizard and an Ivysaur, and he's getting ready to take him. But then he's disqualified because we're not in the most recent version where you can battle two on two. Um, no, it's against the rules to use two Pokemon at once. So it's at this point. James gets disqualified. Expelled. And then expelled, yeah. Well, what same difference. Um and then he's sitting by a tree, just dejected, calling himself a loser. And Jesse and Meowth walk up and Jesse says, Well, I know a way that we can all be winners. And then we cut back to the battlefield. And the instructor throws out a Flareon. And, and Ash he gets says, a well, coffee. <coughs> or a wheezing. A, a, a wheezing. And Ash is like, wah! <laughs> <And, you know, laughs> I think we all were. Because... Um, he, he sends, what, what, what's the attack? So Weezing uses what, like smoke screen or something? Just 
opening up a whole bunch of gas. And Flareon being the fire type does a what looks like a tackle like flamethrower. It jumps up and does flamethrower as she's doing or as she's doing a tackle and the fire gets engulfed in the gas and blows Flareon back, like all the way back to the train. But that's not the end of the bath. Right, because uh, Flareon lands smack on his feet. And then Flareon uses glare. And then uh, Ash has Weezing do smokescreen. And Flareon. Attack- oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, just tackles it and just knocks it out of the smog and knocks it out and wins the first round. Yes. And victory for Ash. And now Ash is on cloud nine again. And Rocket's over here. <laughs> we get a, we get a funny taking image. Notes. Yeah. Taking notes. Just like, okay, okay. So sc- smoke screen and then tackle. But the next Pokemon that he, that the trader throws out is a Jotian. So Ash, of course, throws out an Arbok. So he's getting and all of Team get, Rocket's Pokemon. Right. And I mean, we'll we'll get that hammered home in, in just a second. So uh, the trainer, the, the instructor tells Jolteon to use agility. Um, Arbok uses um, Glare. I, I think Glare again. And Jolteon's frozen in place, and um, Arbok goes in to use Rap Attack, but, but Jolteon's, Jolteon's spikes, spikes are too much. And, um, you know, Arbok gets knocked back, hopping, and then apparently its spikes being squeezed are like a version of a charge, and then... Jolteon uses, you know, Thundershock and just fries. As we've, Arbok. I was going to say, as we've seen like 50 times so far in the show, Arbok gets fried. And then, <clears throat> and then third is Meowth. Yeah. So, and then the, the instructor throws out a Vaporeon and Meowth all. Complete uh, Team Rocket's Meowth is all giddy. It's like, hey, it's another Meowth. Hey, Meowth. And he's, you know, waving to it and shit. And, and he's uh, like, use Fury Swipes. Because Ash doesn't know any of Meowth's yeah. attacks. Which is fair. <laughs> I mean, we've barely had to realize that Meowth is a Pokemon at this point. Um, and Ash is like, oh, th- uh, that's a good idea. And he, go- and he goes in and Vaporeon uses Ice Beam and yeah, how was this Meowth even fair? Like there. you we have a full Vaporeon, Jotion, and Flareon. Like that those are no competition for the Pokemon that Ash drew. How does this not make him a Pokemon master? Or yeah, how how or I mean, how how would good. this make him a Pokemon master, I must say. I mean, all you can say is at least Arbok and Weezing have evolved, but Meowth is still a Meowth instead of a Persian. Yeah. And Meowth so, yeah, from Ash Team Rocket. Got, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, Ash kind of got the, the, the crap yeah. end of the stick. I mean, at least, you know, Jesse got an Ivysaur and a Charizard. For real. You know, and a Pikachu. And it's at this point that Meowth from Team Rocket just gets offended and runs over and just starts scratching Ash's face. And he's like, how could you treat a fellow me out that way? How dare you? And he breaks the other me out out of the ice. And the instructor, he's like, oh, a talking me out. I want it. I'm going to catch it. And that's where this we find so out dumb. Team Rocket still has the other Pokemon. Right. And, you know, they... They get themselves all hyped up. Oh, you know we're gonna we're gonna take this whole place over. You know we we've we've got some good Pokemon for once. We're gonna we're gonna wreck shop, and they get everybody squared up, and they say you know flamethrower and razor leaf and 
thunder shock and the trainer basically just snaps his fingers and goes about face and the because they're his pokemon and they were raised by him as ash says and um team rocket once again their best laid plans have have gone rot and you know ash turns his rented pokemon against team so we've got arbok squeezing jesse uh meowth on meowth violence which is kind of funny which is funny especially after uh team rockets meowth bust uh bust the actual meowth out of the ice block like five seconds before um and then um you know coughing is messing or uh, wheezing is messing with james and then uh ash has wheezing use explosion team rocket gets blasted off again and the battle area is just a huge crater yes but everybody's just fine with that yeah because i'm sure they fix it all the time I'm sure that happens every other Tuesday. So it's at this point, Team Rocket is blasting off again, and we shoot to the inside of the exam building where everybody's surrounding Ash, Misty, and Brock um, as they just help save this whole institute with the instructor. But they say because of... Team Rocket's interference. Everybody's tests are null and void, and they'll have to start, start all over again, which, which is, is bullshit, bullshit. Because <laughs> it, I mean, at at least the room stuff the, the, should still be fine, right? Yeah. Why do they all have to start all the way over again? And okay, I can understand the battle, but the entire yeah. test. No, I'd be pissed hell off right now. I'm like, okay, no. Especially, I'd be mad if I was Nurse Joy, who who ranked number two out in the out of the whole test, and she won her Pokemon battle. But it's at this point yeah. that Ash and the gang say that this test is not for them, and they're gonna go and get their um get the badges the old fashioned way to get into the Pokemon League. And then that's when we're getting our nice little goodbye that we get 90% of the time on these episodes. Yeah. And then, uh, cause, and apparently, um, apparently, um, for some reason, nurse joy is a part of the goodbye with the, the, the leader of the Institute. Maybe she had a thing reason. for Brock and Brock kind of struck out here. No, because Brock would have stayed until the bitter end. <laughs> Maybe she didn't tell him. <laughs> oh, well, either that or she told him and he just couldn't pick up on cues. Yeah. So, but yeah, we get the nice little goodbye um, from our trio and they're walking away. And then we get the whole um, meow falling into the instructor's arms. He's like, hey, I finally got my talking meow. And then meow kind of jumps away. And then we have a closing scene with Jesse and James. And they have uh, the instructor's meow. Yeah, because they're like, oh, you know, next time we'll get them. We'll we'll show them what Team Rocket's all about. And and they're trying to hype themselves up. And they're like, meow, don't you have something to say? And, you know, obviously it's, it's an actual meow. So it's all like, it's going to say is. Meow. 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 <laughs> and I was expecting, you know, some kind of quip. Like, oh, this one might be an improvement or something. But instead, they're just like, ah. <laughs> so, that was it. So, how did you like this week's episode, Doug? It was... I was going to say it was fine. But it, it was... Not really. It was kind of bullshit. I hate. I I hated well, the rules of this test. Yeah, the test can fuck off. Yes. I mean, I mean, there's no rigid. Like I understand it. You know, like coming from the nurse joy perspective. Yeah, 
you know, she's more often than not busy being a nurse. She can't afford to be traveling around to, you know, eight different cities and hopefully getting a badge on the first go. So if she's got, you know, if she's got a Friday off or whatever, she can go take this test and she can, you know, she can save up and then maybe take a crack at the, the, uh, the Pokemon League, you know, at some point. Yeah. But just in terms of ah, he was only taking it because he got kind of insulted and he got kind of in his own feelings. And then he goes into it with a fucking big hit. So oh, I'm going to, I'm going to smash this thing. And then he fucking, he's in the lower third of all test takers. And then he, well, it's not really about, tests, it's about battling. And then the, the whole, give me your Pokemon that you've worked for at the gate is bullshit. So like I say, at that point, I would have been out the door. So, so what or would... I would have said something along the lines of, I'm going to take the, the written, like the, the classroom part, but I'm out of here after that. I'm not interested in battling with Pokemon that aren't mine. So on, on your five scale, what would you give this up? Probably a two and I'm being generous. Yeah, I'm probably going to go a one and it's going to be the first one that I'm going to give because I, I just, I, I wasn't a fan of this episode. I I didn't I didn't care too much for it. Um, they, they, they had a few funny things in the episode, but it's not it's not worth enough like or have any type of story progression for me to give anything i thought there was a lot of like bullshittery in this episode so i'm giving it a solid one this week and i mean that's fair as well i mean you know filler is filler is well right and unfortunately we're kind of dealing with more of the same Next week. I mean, I don't mean to, well, to mess with people's expectations off the bat. Not too much. I mean, because you get Cassidy and Butch. I mean, they're they're a big thing and within Team Rocket in these upcoming episodes pretty soon. So it's. I mean, we we get introduced to some new characters. That's not just a one off. So yeah. Well, but Butch can fuck up. <laughs> but all right. But that's for next week. So. Do you have anything else to add this week, Doug? No, I don't think so. Um, like I say, tests and you can just kind of fuck off. <laughs> well, then say your goodbye, Doug. Goodbye, Doug. And this is Wrestling Chris G telling all of you out there, don't miss next week's episode because Seat Note is coming onto the show. And he will be going over the Breeding Center Secret, or translated from Japanese, the Secret of the Breeding Center. I might take the Japanese one um, this time. So I'll see you next week. Have a good night, everyone.